Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, men of God. Thank you. Thank you, DC Lloyd. Thank you. Wow. Wow. What an allude. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Amen. Thank you, men and women of God. Wow. I am so excited today to see you all, men and women of God, the young and the old, our bishops, our pastors, our elders and deacons. I want to tell you and assure you, you know what? You are truly special. Thank you to our youth. My goodness, they have logged in today. I really appreciate you. May God bless you. Thank you so much. Please allow me today to uh, greet my sister. You know what? I was talking to her and talking to her and inviting her and inviting her. She's been coming a couple of times and I want to um, appreciate you, Sis Portia. Thank you so much for coming in as well. I thank you. You've been coming a few weeks actually, and I'm so proud and I'm grateful to God for keeping on, keeping on. God bless you. Thank you. Sis Portia is in Cape Town. And at some point, maybe I'll get you to hook up with uh, uh, Mam Khasire in Cape Town. Thank you. Uh, men and women of God, so it's possible we can keep uh, inviting our friends, our relatives to come in and to tune in uh, so that we hear this gospel together. After the men of Gadara had been released and delivered, what did he do? <laughs> what did he do, that man from Gadara? Wow. What did he do? The word of God says he went to the 10 cities. 10. 10 cities. Can you imagine? 10 cities. And we began to tell them what Jesus had done. Thank you, Baba Lois for even telling us about that because we cannot keep it to ourselves. If we keep it to ourselves, we are depriving our growth mm -hmm. as well. I thank you men and women of God for coming in. My joy this morning and always to see our mom and um, Bishop, Bishop Charles, come on, let's put our hands together and give God the glory for this Woo! wonderful man of God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Baba. Thank you for coming always and for keeping on, keeping on. I believe that God has got something special for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm humbled this morning to be sharing with you the word of God. Hallelujah. I would like us to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I would like us to... Just put your hand on your head and begin to ask the Lord to speak to you this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, open my eyes, open my ears, open my mind. Lord God, speak to me. I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak in your power and in your might. Reveal yourself to me, Lord God, in your word. Rakisa handerebosh. That, Lord, I will not remain the same. That I will be transformed and I will be changed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I want to thank God for the intercession group. My goodness, men and women of God, let's give the Lord a hand of praise for the intercessors. Men and women of God who sit daily can you imagine monday to sunday these men and women of god have laid down their lives to come to the altar of god and petition for us they pray for us monday to sunday hallelujah may god bless you may god do what only what he can do for you in jesus name and your families thank you thank you men and women of god amen and so this morning it is my greatest pleasure, my greatest pleasure to share with you what God has laid in my heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so um, I am going to be sharing this word of God with you. And I believe that this is the word that God has brought into my heart for this season. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. 
And now we are going to go to the word of God in the book of Matthew, Matthew 17. We are going to be reading scriptures, a lot of scriptures. So I, I compel you to have your paper and pen together so that we will be able to read this word together. Just in case you say, Pastor V was talking something that we don't even know about. So please have your pen and paper with you so that we will read this together. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so the word of God says uh, in uh, 17, Matthew 17, verses 19 to 21. Is there a fast reader, please, who can read for us, please? Or maybe I can read. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart, that means aside, and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. <laughs> verse 21, you will notice that this verse in some, in some other versions has been removed for some reason, I don't know why. But I read from King James, it says, how bad this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah to the living God. Glory to God. Hence, the reason why we got there from our bishop saying this kind goes only by prayer and fasting. It's good to be here today. Uh, for the past weeks, we were being encouraged. We were being empowered. We were being, you know, um, a, a lifted up, you know, to, to live a life. And we were being taught the fundamental, I call them the fundamentals, actually, of a strong Christian life. To be taught how to be strong even in the times of hardship. You know, to be taught not to be afraid in the times of, of pressure. Uh, to be taught, you know, how to stand even in, 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 in very in perilous times, those subjects were really good. Those teachings were quite good for our Christian walk. But today we will look at one of the most powerful key tools uh, to a successful spiritual living that I learned from the early years of my spiritual walk with the Lord. <laughs> Through my few years of uh, personal experience, I have seen it work for me. I did not learn it from Bible school or from college or from anywhere else, but I was taught by my mentor, by my pastor. And uh, when he taught us, you know, he was not as lenient maybe as we are today. Um, maybe some of us as we get it, you know, um, I, I then, uh, adopted it and got it, you know, and, and I did not drop it because I now am working and getting money and I buy whatever I want, whenever I want. No, no, did I exchange it for <laughs> modernization? Because do you know that uh, the modern world can change you? I've seen many people who came from Africa. They were real Christians, <laughs> true Christians. Real Christians who believe that with me, it's true, strong Christians. But when they came to the modern world, they were modernized. <laughs> when they came to the first world, they were modernized. And the Bible says <laughs> they came to Jesus and they said, why did we not cast this demon out? And he said, this kind does not go out, but by only praying and fasting. Hallelujah. You will agree with me that uh, the Bible in the book of Matthew 10 verse 1, Jesus had actually called his disciples and uh, together and said to them, I give you power and authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Uh, did you read that scripture? 
let's read that scripture. We want to go back to it and read it, please. We want to read it. We want to read both. Um, Matthew chapter 10, verse 11. So as I go on, somebody to open these scriptures because we want to read them. Because when we read, who knows that when we hear the word, I mean, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. So someone to open those scriptures because we are going to be reading them. Hallelujah. So the disciples had been given authority in the past with instructions hallelujah, to heal the sick and to drive out demons. When confronted with a, with a boy who was severely oppressed by an unclean spirit, who would cause him, which would cause him to have seizures and to throw him even into the fire or even into the water. Jesus, they could not do it. And then Jesus expresses his feelings with them and drives out that demon. And he says to them, uh, how bait this thing, this kind comes only out by prayer and fasting. I wonder how many of us today have things that will not go unless we really fast, unless we really pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Things that are waiting in the atmosphere for you. Ah, oh, that can only go by prayer and fasting. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So let's read those scriptures. Please, if somebody has gotten those, let's read them. Anybody? And someone to open Matthew 9 verse 14 as well, please. We would like a fast reader, please, if you are there, so that we are not delayed. You can unmute yourself and read, please. Oh, praise the Lord. Am I on my own? Glory to God. Praise Jesus. Amen. Sorry, mom. Is it Matthew chapter 10? What verse again? Can you please read verse, verse one? one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will, I will read from uh, New King James this version. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's Matthew 10 verse 1. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits mm -hmm. to cast them out mm -hmm. and to heal all kinds of sickness mm -hmm. and all kinds of diseases. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse one. Okay, if you can read, please, Matthew 9, verse 14. Matthew 9, 14. Again, reading from New King James's uh, version. He said, then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often? Mm. But your disciples do not fast. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to just look at something right there. You know, um, so what happening here is that um, the, the disciples of Jesus um, <laughs> are, are, are with their master and the disciples of John come then to Jesus and they ask a question and uh, why are your disciples not fasting like us? Why, why are they doing this thing? You know, because we believe in fasting. Maybe fasting was working for them, you know, when they got into these tight places, when they got into these predicaments, when they fasted, things happened. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And now listen to what Jesus says. Now I'm going to read. Hallelujah. Verse 15, Jesus says uh, to them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn mm -hmm. as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them 
and then they shall fast. Glory to God. I don't know whether it's there in your Bible. When the children are with their bridegroom in the chamber, they do not mourn. But as long as the bridegroom is with them, I mean, is now without them, they shall be taken and then they shall be able to fast at that moment. But at that moment when they are with the, bride, the bridegroom, they cannot fast and mourn. But when their bridegroom is gone, then that's when they will fast and pray. So listen to this. Hold on there. I want you to hold on to that scripture. It does not take much. I want you to see this. I want you to notice this because where we read in 17, in chapter 17, you will notice that that's where the transfiguration took place. Isn't that so? Now he meets the disciples um, in chapter 10 and he gives them power and he gives them authority over the demons and everything else. And then in 17, he takes Peter, John and James and he goes to the mountain of transfiguration. And when he is there, it only takes him to go up to the mountain of transfiguration that the remaining disciples meet this predicament where they are not able to heal a young man who was brought in by his father with seizures. And that exacerbates Jesus. And he says to them, this kind does not go out only by prayer and fasting. I know that he had said other things like it is because of your unbelief. But after speaking to them and maybe seeing their hearts and maybe seeing where they were at, because they did not have this other element of fasting and praying. I'm sure that something was lacking inside them. And Jesus saw it, you know, and said, this kind will not just go, but this kind will go by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah to the living God. Glory to God. How many believe with me? that this key seems to have been lost in the modern Christian ministry. How many believe with me that this key is found in the very pages in the Bible and yet some of us have put it aside, yet some of us have ignored it, yet some of us are just hearing it from the Ramadan, even the Muslims are doing much better than us. <laughs> Hallelujah. So maybe you know exactly what I'm talking about now. I'm talking about fasting. I am really talking about fasting. We are in the days of fasting and praying. And someone may be asking questions. Ah, why fasting? Why are we doing this? Why is, he, is she even calling for fasting? Every time we've got to fast, fast, fast and pray. Listen, my brother and my sister. <laughs> Let me just say maybe the definition of fasting. Fasting is voluntarily abstaining from food, not for your waistline, not for your good looks, but for the purposes of the spiritual growth. Hallelujah. Again, I must repeat this. Fasting is voluntarily abstaining from food for, for spiritual purposes. Hallelujah. And sometimes from water, but that's the exception rather than the rule. That's why I said initially that my pastor did not make it easy for us. My pastor used to tell me, Veronica, it's time of fasting, no food, no water. Mm -hmm. That's how we fasted at home, no food, no water. And you will be going for revivals and you will be going for, um, uh, 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 for prayer meetings you will be going home visits. You are fasting, you are praying, you are going for home visits, you are going for um, um, what you call them, tower lights to go and preach. <laughs> I remember that even with uh, uh, our pastor G, when you are still here, we would drive maybe places to like Middlesbrough and we are fasting and praying. 
you know, and um, it's not easy to drive 400 and something miles. You are fasting, you are praying. <laughs> Generally, you know what? <laughs> it is abstaining from food. And it is described by Jesus, even in Matthew chapter four, verse two. Let's look at that, uh, that, that scripture. Matthew chapter four, verse two, which says, and after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then become hungry. He became hungry. It is clear to me that he did abstain. Hallelujah. From, <laughs> from food and not from water. Hallelujah. For those 40 days and 40 nights. Because anyone who is even fasted in, uh, for a brief moment while without water, you will understand that you become more thirsty even, even, though, even at that time. Hallelujah. And I guess this is why then Jesus, I mean, the devil did not uh, even go to come to Jesus with a glass of water to say, drink this water, because he knew that Jesus was drinking water, but he wanted to say to him, turn the, the stones to food. Uh, what do you think? Hallelujah. Put a, a wine on that chat and get excited about this thing. We've got to fast. Put on that chat. We've got to fast for spiritual purposes, for the sharpening of our spiritual man. Hallelujah, glory to the living God. Hallelujah. So, fasting to me indicates that Jesus abstained from food, but not from water. Too many of us modern Christians, fasting seems unfamiliar and even frightening. And this is strange because fasting was regularly practiced by God's people throughout the Bible. Record also shows that it is most practiced and accepted by most of the major religious sectors. Uh, the Buddhists uh, fast, the Muslims fast, and the Hindus fast, hallelujah. Today, we want to just delve into this thing and get the explanation fully so that when we fast and pray, we know exactly what we are doing. So why fasting? Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 6. Glory to God. In my nursing career, you know what? When we want you to, when we teach, when we want you to wash your hands, we will not say to you, go and wash hands, but we will teach you the model of how to wash your hands. And when we want you to take blood, we will teach you how to. Hallelujah. How to. Glory to the living God. And here is Jesus, Jesus himself. Who knows that when Jesus is speaking, we have to listen. So similarly, if you can do it in your sector, in your employment, that when you are being taught something, you listen, their how to. You want to know their how to. So this is how Jesus is putting it across to us. He is teaching us how to fast and he's teaching us how to pray. Glory to God. So chapter number six, verse 16, glory to the living God. He says, moreover, <laughs> when you fast, oh my goodness, I want you to just cling, just listen to those phrases because we don't want to leave this place uninformed. We want to leave this place informed and able to do what God wants us to do. Not when what man wants us to do, but what God compels you and me to do. Glory to God. He says, moreover, when you fast, that's your Jesus. Glory to God. Do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, <laughs> they have their reward. But you, when you fast, you, when you fast, my goodness, <laughs> anoint your heads with oil and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Glory to the living God. I want you to tell me what phrases you can see there they are, that are speaking out to you and me this morning. Because he is speaking to his disciples. He is not speaking.
speaking to just mere men. He says, when you pray, when you fast, sorry, when you fast, moreover, when you fast, 17, he says, but when you fast, glory to the living God, which means he has an expectation. Is that right? Put it in that chat that God has an expectation for me to fast. He doesn't say if you fast. So if you know English, English, if you know and understand English, it says when you fast. If it says when you fast, that means there is an expectation that is upon you and me that we should fast. Not if we. <laughs> there are some people who want to do it when they want and when they feel like it. And whenever it's okay with them, they don't want to fast. <laughs> when it's all right with them, mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, when money is in their pockets, mm -mm -mm -mm. they don't want to fast. When everything is hala hala, they don't want to fast. But wait a minute, when the enemy pinches you, when he comes with a, a, a vice, when he puts in, in a vice, he, <laughs> that's when you begin to think fasting. But why don't you make it easy for yourself? Glory to the living God. Jesus says, when you fast, my goodness, hallelujah. Now, listen to this second model. He says to you and me in verse five, the same chapter, Matthew 6, verse five. He says, when you pray, <laughs> that means these two things are sister and brother. They are belt, <laughs> belt and your waist. Hallelujah. The other one is the belt. Maybe the other one is your trousers. So they don't leave each other. They dwell together. When you fast, when you pray, hallelujah, you shall not be like the hypocrites. My goodness, I love the model of Jesus. I love what Jesus, teacher Jesus is a genius. Teacher Jesus, there is none like him. I love him. I love him. I love him. He says, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and know on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, hallelujah, assuredly, glory to God. I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, <laughs> you, you, when you pray, my goodness, on the other verse, it says, but you, when you fast, my goodness, hallelujah. So there is an expectation for you to fast, for you to pray. Glory to the living God. When you pray, when you pray, do this. Glory to God. Pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Glory to God. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Oh, I love Jesus. I love teacher Jesus. Hallelujah. He is a master teacher. I love him. I love him. I love him. He made an emphasis. Glory to God. When I'm teaching my students how to wash their hands, I make an emphasis. There is a one, two, three category that I expect them to fulfill when they are washing their hands. You wash your hands like this. You first of all, put your hands underneath the tap water and then you get your water, I mean your soap, and then you rub the hands together. You then put your fingers across and then you rub it in using the thumbs and you rub it. In. I put the one, two, three up to seven so that my students, when they present themselves to whosoever wants them to do the hand washing technique, they will know. This is the similar thing that Jesus is saying to you and me, our, his disciples. He's saying, my disciples, I want you when you pray to do this, when you fast to do this. And when you do this, you will get results. <laughs> Hallelujah to the living God. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope I will manage to finish this. <laughs> I want to agree with you that fasting is not easy. 
fasting is difficult. John Wesley in one of his journals says, I am persuaded that if a Christian has understood <laughs> the need to fast and does not practice fasting, he will backslide just as surely as a Christian who has understood the need to pray and does not pray. That was John Wesley. He had no fun. You know, I, I looked at this and I said, my goodness, was this here in England? <laughs> Listen to what he was doing. John Wesley would not ordain to the Methodist ministry any man who did not commit himself to fasting every Wednesday and Friday till 4 p.m. They were not ordained. You would not be a church minister. <laughs> but <laughs> some of us, you know, we are called the pastors. We are called the elders. We are called the deacons. And do not even, you only fast maybe the beginning of the year when we say we are all doing a corporate fasting. And you don't even finish those 12 days. You, <laughs> you eat your food, have fork and knife. My goodness, Jesus, help us. Jesus help us. And when you are in trouble, you begin to run back to God. This is why then Jesus, God says in Isaiah 65, I was here and I was waiting. I wanted to respond and no one said anything. No one said, God help me, help me. None of us was saying, Lord help me. I can't even fast. You know what? Help me, Jesus. Help me, God. My, I have not taught my stomach to even respond. Lord God, I have not touched my stomach every time I want to tell my stomach to fast. It speaks to me back. Whenever I go to town, I smell every cake. Sometimes I smell even the, 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 the drink that I have never smelled. Lord God, it just smells nice to me. You have never asked Jesus to help you to say, Lord, I am here. I need help. You smell even, you know, the, <laughs> the things that you have never, the, the, the fruit will smell like something that is peculiar to you. <laughs> And it hinders you from fasting, which is one tool that Jesus wants you and me to have. And you see, you see, um, <laughs> fasting and praying, fasting specifically aligns you and me with God. It, it singles out one thing um, and that is pride. It deals with pride because when you are hungry, even if somebody says something to you, even if they come and kick you, you can't lift your hand, you can't, you can't talk back to them, you can't do anything. Your spirit man is soaked, your flesh is weak in it, 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 it yields to the Lord. And I want to mention this, my brothers and sisters, that our pride has hindered us to gain this tool of, you know, of fasting and fasting results to humility. And humility is the greatest tool that God is seeking for in our hearts and our lives you will understand our dad would preach to us about pride even when we got married and I hated pride since then because I saw how great men, how powerful men, how our wonderful pastors, some who I looked at and I emulated, some of the greatest teachers of the word, were interrupted by this thing called pride and it made them fall. And I got this new vision recently, how vicious and how evil pride is and how it keeps us back from all the blessings that God intends for us. I have seen honestly great men. I have seen powerful men and women. <laughs> very educated, talented with great gifts, 
that would be helpful in the kingdom succumb to pride and they give it another name you know they tell you that it's not pride they tell you i'm here to just teach i am teaching you i am i am encouraging you I mean, they hide behind behind their education they smoother it they cover it they cover their pride and i have seen them crumble because of pride and their gift almighty god has been binned uh, you know and you and me know that god resists the pride and but he gives grace to the humble hallelujah fasting therefore has everything to do with you and me aligning ourselves you are saying none of my will lord but yours look at what david says in psalm 35 verse 18 he says but as for me when they were sick <laughs> i put on my sackcloth i humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer was answered by the lord i know at times when you want to fast it is when people want to offer you to go to the restaurants to go to to go out and uh, you know and and drink and and do all sorts of things but you know what i think it is time for us to be disciplined hallelujah to the living god to give your stomach a lecture to say my stomach you are going to learn you are going to be disciplined those who live with me i'm not teaching you something i'm not sharing with you something that i don't do those who live with me will agree with with me if, if they really want to be truthful i am disciplined when it comes to things pertaining food i am disciplined when i'm saying i am fasting it doesn't matter you eat what what kind or you go out elsewhere whatever you do i tell my stomach not now <laughs> later i brought my stomach under subjection i say it with boldness hallelujah glory to the living god hallelujah let me tell you <laughs> the stomach is a wonderful seven but it is a terrible master <laughs> who wants to believe with me it is a wonderful seven but it's a terrible master who is the master in your life you or your stomach it's a good question to ask ourselves pastors leaders especially us who call ourselves pastors and leaders some of us can't fast because we have ailments in our bodies i well i totally agree with that i totally i totally agree with that and when you have a hunger for the things of god you will find a way i'm telling you let trouble come into your life you will find a way of fasting you will do something about it because it is now trouble humility is an element an important key to effective prayer it's a scriptural means ordained by god for us to humble ourselves before god throughout the bible god requires his people to humble themselves before him there are many many different passages of scripture which emphasize this matthew 18:4 says jesus himself says therefore whoever humbles himself like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven glory to god matthew 23 verse 12 again the words of jesus how many of us know that when jesus speaks you've got to listen to him but how many of us do listen jesus says whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted james 4 verse 10 humble yourself before the lord and he will lift you up first peter 5 verse 6 humble yourself therefore before the mighty hand of god that he will lift you up in due time one important feature of all those scriptures is that the responsibility of humbling ourselves is not on god but it is on us <laughs> you it is you it is me who got to humble ourselves we cannot pray and say god humble me no 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 you have to humble yourself and one of the 
things and the keys and tools that you have to use to humble yourself is by fasting, putting your flesh under subjection. Hallelujah. Of God, glory to God. The words of David really challenged me. He says, I humbled my soul with fasting so that the way David, so it shows me that the way that David employed was to humble his soul was by fasting. Hallelujah. Now let's look at one historical thing I'm telling you before we finish this thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's turn to Ezra 8 verse 21 and 23. I think I will finish with this and or maybe second chronicles as well. Ezra 8. Ezra is about to lead the returning Jews um, who were in exile in Babylon back to Jerusalem. They have before them a long journey, a difficult journey, a journey filled with terrorists, with thugs, with their enemies. They were taking with them their wives, their possessions, and Ezra was afraid that he was going to lose all these things on the way. And you and me know how the children of Israel were like. You know, they are the ones who wanted to kill Moses even in the wilderness. Why did you bring us here? Now Ezra was faced with that same situation. How am I going to take these people through? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Moreover, they had the, the sacred vessels of God that they had taken from the temple with them. They were in desperate need for safety. Hallelujah and protection. Ezra had two options or he had two alternatives. Hallelujah. He could appeal to the emperor to give him a letter or to give him soldiers. Hallelujah. And the horsemen. <laughs> Or he could trust in the Lord with all his heart. Glory to the living God. <laughs> but my brothers and sisters, men and women of God, glory to God. That problem that you have, that keeps presenting itself in your home, that keeps presenting itself in your life, your marital problems <laughs> that have become a stronghold, that have become challenges, that have kept you back, that arrogance that you have, that subtle pride that you smoother every day, that you have kept to yourself and you think that you are not proud. It is said because we can't see the pride that would tell me all the time. My cousin, do not be proud. Oh, sorry. Uh, Veronica, do not be proud. I'm, I'm mentioning my other surname. Do not be proud. You have to work at yourself. You have to work at your life. And I said, Lord, help me. Where is it that I can find it? I want to crush it. I don't want it to live in my life. And I prayed to God and asked God, hear what Ezra is saying. He's saying now in, the, in verse number eight, they in Ahava, <laughs> in Ahava, at the canal, I proclaimed a fast so that we might humble ourselves before our God and ask him for a safe journey. My goodness, hallelujah. For us and our children, with all our possessions, I was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen to protect us from our enemies on the road because we had told the king that the good hand of our God is on everyone who looks to him but his great anger is against all those who forsake him. So we fasted and petitioned our God, my goodness, hallelujah, about this, and he answered our prayer. Oh, oh. really, Ezra had resorted to that kind of, if, if, if Ezra had resorted to that carnal kind of mind of going to the men, of going to seek help to, to, uh, from, the, from the emperor, this would not have happened to him. Hallelujah. But by faith, he approached God and fasted and prayed. Remember, Jesus said it is because of your unbelief. But this man arose, stepped up in faith and said, God, we are going to fast. Even if it does not mean it makes sense, but we are going to rise up and we are going to fast and we will seek your face. And guess what? God answered them. Hallelujah. In another situation, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 2 and 4. 
Hallelujah. There is an incident that happens to Jehoshaphat. He is all of a sudden surrounded by his enemies. And, <laughs> and before he even knows it, his friends, some men tell him, you know what? <laughs> Don't even try because they are already surrounding you. They are in Hazaz and Tamar. So you have no way out. You can't do anything. Even if you tried to, to uh, combat an army, you can't do anything about it. You are already surrounded. That voice, I used to hear it in, from my country. When they say to us with the helicopter, you are surrounded. We had nowhere to go. <laughs> we had nowhere to even hide. Here is Jehoshaphat. He could not hide anywhere because he was already surrounded. But hear him say, my goodness, hallelujah to the living God. <laughs> the word of God says he called all Judah. And he proclaimed the fast glory to God to, for them to seek the face of the Lord. Hallelujah to the living God. And something significant happens. Something outstanding happens. Something that had never happened happens. Glory to God. And listen to this prayer. He says, oh, our God. Will you not judge? Will you not judge them? Lord, here we are. We have no power. <laughs> are you in that situation? We have no power, Lord. Hallelujah. We do not know what to do. Are you in that space where you don't know what to do? I don't know about you, but I don't have anything to do. I don't know what to do. Hallelujah to the living God. I don't know what to do. Maybe you have a resolution. Maybe you have a resolve in your situation. Maybe you have a, a way of going around your circumstances, but I don't. This is why we have come before God and we are saying, God, here we are. You have a way, but we don't. You know where we are going, but we don't. And therefore, Father, we are coming to you and we surrender our lives to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, have a way, almighty God. Give us a way in this situation. Hallelujah. PCCI family, hallelujah. Come, let us seek the Lord. Come and let us seek the Lord. Let us petition the Lord for our businesses. Beginning of the year, we prayed, we sought the Lord, but there are some situations that are seemingly stubborn. There are some gates that are seemingly stubborn. They can only go, this kind can go by prayer and fasting. That prayer, fasting, that prayer, fasting, that's the model that our Lord Jesus has given us. Hallelujah. Prayer and fasting, not your education, not your Bible school, not what you have learned from your friends. This is the right model that your Jesus and my Jesus has given us. Fast when you fast, when you pray, when you fast, not if you pray, not if you fast, but when you pray. This is the expectation that your Jesus has for you and me. This is the expectation that he has for his children. Come, let us fast. Come, let us seek his face. He will make a change in your life, in your attitude. That attitude that says you can't do that to me. You cannot speak like that to me. Ah, let's go before God. Let's ask him for mercy right now. Lift up your voice. You can unmute yourself. Lord, help me. Come into my marriage. Come into my situation. Come into my workplace. Come into my business. Unmute yourself. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Come and have your way. Lord, come and have your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord God, bills are piling up. There is no money at home. My wife is acting weirdly. My husband is acting weirdly. Lord, help us. Come on, lift up your voice. 
Pray to your God this morning. Pray to your God and seek his face. Glory to the living God. You cannot remain the way you are. You cannot afford to remain the way you are. Something must change. Something must change in the name of Jesus. Unmute yourself and begin to pray. It is only when you pray that things will change. It is only when you fast that things will change. Don't tell me you're diabetic because we also make the diabetic fast. You can fast. You can pray. You can God. Hallelujah. Lord, let there be a change. Let there be a change, Lord God. Let there be a change, King Jesus. Let there be a change, Lord, as we seek your face. Let there be a change. Lord, heal our sick, Lord God. How long are we going to have our sick, not him? How long, Almighty God, how long? How long are we going to have our young people, Lord God, not married? Lord God, how long are we going to have our sick women, Almighty God, not not married. Lord God, help us. Father, here we are. How long are we going to have our children acting the way they do? Lord, help us this morning. We are crying out, oh God. We are crying out, Almighty God. When we pray, when things are when we pray, when things are bad, we are crying out. Oh God, God, I waited for someone to say, God, I can't do it. I can't fast help me. Hallelujah. Pray in the Lord. Give me discipline to my stomach. I speak to my stomach. My stomach have discipline in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this afternoon. I thank you, Lord God, for your healing that is taking place right now. I thank you, Lord God, for changing circumstances right now. Thank you for entering into those rooms. Thank you for entering into that marriage. Thank you, Lord God, for fixing things in that marriage. Thank you, Lord God, for fixing things in that business. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing humbleness, Almighty God, in the hearts of your people. Thank you, Lord God, for raising your people once again. In the mighty name of Jesus, Baba, I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you are here in the sound of my voice and you've never said yes to Jesus, this is what your Jesus says. He says, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for somebody. Somebody to just say, I'm here, Lord Jesus. I am coming. I need your help. Someone to say, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. If you are there like me, you want to say, Jesus, I need your help. I need your help. You've never heard about Jesus. And even, you, even if you've heard about Jesus and you're saying, Lord, I need your help. Lift up that voice. Lift up your hand. And I'm going to pray with you. We are going to ask the Lord of mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for those hands. Thank you for those hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you are God of mercy. Lord God, meet them at their point of need. In the name of Jesus, have mercy, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, even as your people are giving themselves to you this morning, they're saying, Father, help us. They're saying, Lord God, help us this morning. Help us, God. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us where we are weak, Lord God. Help us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We stand, Almighty God. We take courage in you because we know that, Lord, you are our strength and our shield and our buckler. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. And if you've prayed that prayer, we want to give the Lord a hand of praise. We want to give the Lord thanks. 
for his grace and mercy, his goodness. Hallelujah to the living God. Amen, amen, amen. I live Hallelujah. You. Thank you, ma'am, for your power. Amen to our wonderful deacon, Deacon Lloyd. Over to you. 